Okay, so how do we go from one firm with an individual supply function to a whole industry supplying a market? Okay, because one of the assumptions throughout this whole section has been that there are lots of firms providing each type of good. And that's important because that means that firms don't have any control over the price P. Okay, if they tried to charge a higher price than uh, everyone else, no one's going to buy from them because consumers have so many options. And so uh, they're going to basically take the price P as fixed if they charge a lower price than everybody else. It doesn't really help them at all because they're just getting a lower price. They could charge more and for the same cost, get more revenue. So they're going to charge as high a price as they can, which just happens to be what everybody else is charging. But that necessarily means that there's lots of firms in this market. Each one of those firms has a supply function, but they could all be different. Okay. All the firms might face the same wages. They might have the same rental rate of capital, but they could all have different production technologies. Some of them might be big mega factories that are really efficient. Others might be small like mom and pop operations, okay, or small firms or whatever. And so we don't necessarily need them all to have the same supply function. Uh, and if they don't, that's no problem. We can still create a function for the supply of the entire market. So if we were to graph these supply curves, they look like this. So here's firm one, and we've got price on the vertical axis and the amount that they produce on the horizontal. And let's have one that looks sort of like what we do for example. Here's their supply curve, okay? Remember we had like uh, Q is equal to P divided by 4WR to the one half. So in a sense, that's P over some constant, which I can just call A. Okay, so it just goes up with the slope 1 over A. That's firm 1. Suppose firm 2 is over here, and it has a different type of production function, such that its cost curve is kind of funny looking. It starts very low, but then it gets high. Okay, and then let's have one other firm be over here. In fact, let's not have one other firm because we only need two to illustrate the point and we're running out of room anyway. So I'm going to do capital Q for to indicate that this last graph is for the whole market. Okay. And suppose there's just these two firms. How would we derive a market curve from these two guys? What we would do is we'd say all of these have the same vertical axis, the same price. But to figure out what where they fall on the horizontal axis, we're going to add the output of firm one, which I'm now calling Q1, and the output of firm two, which is Q2. So Q is equal to Q1 plus, capital Q is equal to lowercase Q1 plus lowercase Q2. Here's a few examples. So suppose this is $1. If the price is $1, this guy's supplying, let's say, one unit of the good. And let's go all the way over to here. This is $1 for him now. And firm two, is supplying, what does that look like to you guys? Say three. That means that capital Q is going to be four because we add those two together. And I'm going to say four looks like it's over here maybe. Okay, so that's our first point. If we were going to do this again, firm two, since it's got this constant slope, let's say they're doing two. but this guy's not doing that much more than three. We'll say this is five. That means we now need to find 0.7 over here. Let's say that's over here. Okay. And let's do, we probably don't have much room, but let's try for one more, three. All right, this guy's producing three. And this guy's producing, let's say that this is six. All right. So the total market supply is now nine, which we can say is like here, okay? And you can see that the resulting graph we get, as I try to connect these reasonably accurately, is flatter than either one of these because for any price, more is provided than either of them can provide alone, okay? And so 
when we add them horizontally like this, we get this kind of stretched out version of all the graphs, okay? And as we keep going, like as we keep going up, uh, this guy is gonna start contributing less and less, and this guy is gonna be contributing more and more, so the curve will start to look more just like firm one. At the bottom end, firm two is like the big contributor, so at the outset, it's like firm two that's doing most of the production, and there's some mix of them together, okay? In general, the total supply of the market is, if there's N firms, then we add up the supply curve for each of those guys, okay? So this is supply of market one, or of firm one, supply of, plus supply of firm two, plus supply of firm three. Another way to write it maybe that's just as easy to see as if we use the cues directly. And these are functions of the price, okay? And that's how we go to the market. We add up the quantities that everybody supplies. Um, one mistake sometimes people make is they get to the point where price equals marginal cost, and they forget to solve for Q. And instead of adding up all the Qs, they add up all the prices. And that's like adding these things vertically. That doesn't make sense, okay? We need to add the quantities together to get the amount that the whole market is supplying, okay? But anyway, at the end of the day, we have some new equation that's the, that summarizes the supply available from all the firms in the market as, um, as the price changes. And in the simplest case, in the simplest case where there's say uh, n identical firms, then what we need to do is if we have lowercase q is equal to supply times p, and if there's n identical firms, then that means capital Q is equal to capital N times lowercase q, because each one of them responds to the price in the same way, or n times s of p. So that's the simple case. If it's not simple, if the firms are different, you have to go through and actually add them together, which uh, we'll do an example for in the next problem.